premier uh, producers and uh, directors and, and all around uh, people of Broadway. Uh, he is the co-executive of Broadway HD. Uh, let us switch over to our friend Stuart F. Lane. For those of you who don't know Stuart, I, I, his wife, Bonnie Comley, who is also uh, one of the executives at uh, Broadway H2. Stuart. Hi. How are you doing there, sir? You know, doing well tonight, you know, all things considered. Uh, all things considered. Well, where, where are we speaking to you from? I'm in the heart of Manhattan. Okay. The comeback city. The comeback city, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's so much excitement right now with uh, with everything that's happening with the return of Broadway in some you know limited uh, capacity with the return of live performance, return of outdoor Shakespeare, uh, and you. Uh, I was about to say that that as I was preparing for tonight's uh, interview program, I was in communication with your wife Bonnie Comley, and she sent me a bio uh, about some of your work. And I think in the hour or so program that we have, I could get through about half of that bio. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm an old man. I've done a lot of things. But, but it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's one uh, incredible accomplishment after another. I think it's like you've won six Tony Awards as a producer and you were nominated for nine additional Tony Awards. Uh, and then it's, it's just any other thing that you, you list, you know, the Lucille Lachelle and, you know, whatever. It's, it's just, you know, a who's who of, of every major award. So uh, we're in the presence of one of the, one of the leading names in, in the world of uh, Broadway and uh, theater in New York City. Uh, and, and I think you actually have the, the website, you have the name Mr. Broadway. Is that correct? Uh, well, yeah, I've worked on that. <laughs> yes, Mr. Bro Mr. com. You can come visit it anytime. <laughs> So, so Stuart, I was uh, watching another interview with you to, to get a sense of, of where you started. And you started uh, not so far from where I started in uh, Great Neck. Uh, you, you were in Kings Point, right? Kings Point, that was it. Uh, I moved there when I was uh, eight years old. So those formative years, eight to 18, uh, were really, really special. And, and uh, I, I, did I hear correctly that what got you into the theater at, at some point along that journey uh, was uh, that you were friends with Sid Caesar and he got you into the theater. Is that right? Well, the story goes, it goes like this. I, I'm friends with this guy, Ricky, Ricky and I third, fourth and fifth grade. We're like best buddies hanging out. You know, we're, 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 we're talking about Twilight Zone episodes together. We're talking about certain uh, TV shows and his father and, and Ricky actually introduced me to like West Side Story, not the movie version, but the, Broadway soundtrack. And he t says his father is an actor. Well, this is 1962. And uh, I, I had no idea who his father was, but he was in a Broadway show. You know, it's the story of seeing your first Broadway show. So, uh, you know, get, you know I'm says, he says, uh, Stu, my, uh, my father's in a show. I would come to New York and see a shit. Well, going into Manhattan alone is an exciting adventure. And, sure. And so now I'm putting on a tie, you know, getting, getting dressed up with a jacket. We're driving uh -huh. in a beautiful New York Broadway theater, not just one of those matchbox movie houses, you know, you had. This was a 1913 built theater. Uh, you get a ticket that says not admit one, but it says the name of the show right on it. Uh -huh. And then you get a playbill. I got two souvenirs and the show hasn't even started yet. And it's like <laughs> exciting. But then they march us down to the front row and the curtain goes up on a musical starring Ricky's father, Sid Caesar. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was and Ricky's it, father, okay. Yeah, and, and so, you know, the, the music was by Cy Coleman. Neil Simon had done the book. Mm -hmm. The audience is having a great time. And because I'm in the front row, I can actually see the actors on the wings preparing to come on, the little tricks that they're doing on stage. And then, then after the show, uh, the audience is having a great time. You know, they're laughing. We go backstage, back slapping, friendship. Uh, the, the camaraderie that was going on backstage and the, the, th the seeing him with a little home away from home. He has a hot plate, a TV, a cot, a refrigerator and friends. I'm going, this, this is the <laughs> life I want. St telling stories in real time, with real people. Right. And, 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 and having a, you know, and, and it's always going to be a home for you. So that kind of, kind of bit me. And that was my, my inspiration to be in the theater. So after that, it was just, you know, the drama classes, the speech classes, everything in high school I could get my hands on, uh, acting classes, and that led on to uh, on going on to college to Boston University where I got a BFA in theater. So how do you transition from that, from being a kid in Great Neck or Kings Point and having a love for the theater and having a passion for the theater and having a degree in theater, how do you go from that to being one of the most prolific producers in Broadway? 
Well, uh, you know, as Lila was saying, uh, back in my day, the, uh, <laughs> we, the, we, and I'm older than her, so you know, I, I mean, I recognize some of the names, like Nikos that she was talking about, but the idea of regional theater was like the, the holy grail, really. Go to, go, to, so, go to the Guthrie Theater, train, learn out there, then come to New York, you know. Right. Uh, that, wasn't, that wasn't to be my, my fortune. I came to New York, and I joined the SAG and AFTRA and Equity, and I did dinner theater, and I did summer stock, and I worked with actors that you don't know today, like Peter Palmer, mm -hmm. who was the original Little Abner on Broadway. Uh, oh, wow. I, I worked with Ed Hurley, the voice of Kraft, uh, you know, and, 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 and earned my equity card in Sullivan, Illinois. Mm -hmm. It's another story. Right. Uh, so, so I was able to get through that. And, and, but in the 70s, and this is the 70s, mm -hmm. things were really tough in New York in the theater scene. The I economics of, Yeah, you, you're too young. <laughs> I remember when I was coming up, it was the, uh, not to date myself, you know, too obviously, but uh, the, you know, the late 70s and early 80s, uh, Times Square in the theater district oh. was not a, a pleasant place to, to be. You didn't mm -hmm. want to be a kid walking around there without, you know, uh, parental guidance. No, oh, exactly right. And so the theater, had, the business had dried up. It had dried up for the stagehands. The beauty pageants had left. All the ancillary jobs that stagehands mm -hmm. and musicians would do dried up. The industrial shows were dying and were drying up, which was which a lot of actors did made some good money at in the, between shows. So it was a tough time. If it wasn't for Chorus Line and Annie, the Schubert's and the Niederlanders would have gone under. That was their saving grace back then. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a tough time, and, and, I, and, and of course, I was there trying to be an actor, and uh, I spent a year in L.A. L.A., they hate the theater. They it's not a theater hate. town. It's, not, it's not a film a town. town. It's not a, not a theater film, town. Film, TV, you know, New York mm -hmm. can do soap operas and commercials, right. theater. But out there, it was movies and, uh, and the aerospace industry and television out there. If you got a job in the theater, they said, well, you couldn't get a job like packing groceries. <laughs> it was really looked down upon. Uh, back right. Then. I was only packing groceries, but it was really looked down. Anyway, so I, I missed the wall of Walking City. I missed New York. I came back. I said, no, I love the industry. I love uh, writing. And I wrote a play for myself. I put my, I hired, it. it actually inadvertently became my first producing job out there. I wrote a play for myself. Mm -hmm. and I had to put it on. So I had to get a theater. I had to get publicity. I had to get advertising. I had to do all the, th I had to hire a director, someone to do the build the set. So I became a producer to get my career launched. So it was kind of interesting. And uh, as a showcase, looking back on it, we only lost 25% of the investment, which is pretty good in theater. For a first producing job, that's like hitting the jackpot. You know the old joke, how do you make a large fortune in the theater? What's that? Start with the small one. <laughs> that's pretty What's much the truth. Show? That's pretty <laughs> much the truth. So, anyway. so you, 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 you produce your own show to get your own work up there. And little by little, that snowballs. Then you know you make the connections. Then next thing you know, you're producing and you move your way up well, the ranks. Well, I, I love New York. So I came back to New York. I started working as an assistant house manager at the Brooks Atkinson Theater during same time next year, which had been running a, a good, healthy time for a play. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I stayed there for an in and out with a tribute with Jack Lemmon. Was there for six months, mm -hmm. uh, both by Bernard Slade. And then I moved over to the Alvin. Al was then the Alvin Theater for Annie. But you know, I said, you know, I love the theater, and I love producing, because house managing is, well, well I mean, it, I respect the job. It's more being a caretaker. You're taking care of the boiler, the patrons, the theater itself, the roofing, mm -hmm. uh, to produce. And it's, you know, it's an interesting lesson in life that you go to buy, you don't buy stocks when they're hot. You buy them right. when they're cold, and nobody right. wants them. And right. the exactly. theater, it was dying. You know, nobody wanted a theater. That's how I was able to get, I, I, I'm, I'm half owner of the Palace Theater here in New York. Right. And I was able to buy into it because nobody else wanted it. That's, you're, you're smart. That's, that's the right way to do it. Well, you buy it when, it's, when it's depressed and then you build it up. That was it. Well, I, you know, I, my feeling was I, I was a diehard New Yorker. Mm -hmm. I believe this town will always come back. Even in, even in those days, it was exciting. There was never right. a dull moment in this town. Oh, no, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there was Broadway, always, there's was, always some energy, right? Always some energy, exactly. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't Broadway, it was happening off Broadway. This right. was about the time Saturday Night Live was becoming uh, very popular. And where were those actors coming from? The off Broadway production of Lemmings and, and then right. you know, all the stuff on the fringe. So this was an exciting time. But nobody wanted to be a producer. And that was an opportunity. So my first show that I read that I liked, I wanted to do was Whose Life Is It Anyway? Mm -hmm. Which was actually an adaptation uh, of a BBC play of a quadriplegic, an artist who wants to have the right to pull the plug on himself because he can't mm. do his work anymore. Right. Uh, so I thought it was a, a good opportunity, a good step, and I did it with Manny Eisenberg. And uh, 
and we recoup 75 percent <laughs> so i'm That's, on my way you're, you're on your way up there you go but then and, again the, you know and, and little by little you work your way up to bigger and bigger productions and well i i you know you cut your teeth on the i tell the story of um you know joe allen's the restaurant here in mm -hmm. i'm sure okay yeah. joe allen's has, has the wall of big flops and there are big names on that wall you know yeah. hal prince is on that wall david mm -hmm. merrick mm -hmm. is on that wall mm -hmm. and yes Stuart lane is on that <laughs> wall uh, you, 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 what's the expression? You can't make an omelet without cracking some eggs. Is that right? Exactly. I call it paying your dues. Anyway, right. I, 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 I was working on a show. It was one of my first shows called Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. It became the most expensive Broadway play ever produced. Two million dollars in like 1980. And it had a great cast. Uh, you know, Diane Weist was in it and John Glover was in it and John Carradine, the, fa you know, the, the father of the Carradines was in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, special effects were being done by a fellow named Bran Ferrin, who had just come off a movie called Altered States, with very mm -hmm. special effects going on. So it was really exciting, and it was the telling of the story of Frankenstein more um, in line with the original book. Because we, so, the, so this particular Frankenstein monster was not Boris Karloff with the spikes in his head and neck. Mm -hmm. It was more of a, a poetical monster, one who, who had once been alive and had a memory and could read and do other things. Well, the audiences didn't like that. I mean, even at the end of the show, when we had the entire Palace Theater collapse on itself with boulders and surround sound vibrating your seats, and oh, you know, the critics hated it. Wow, wow. They hated it. And so we, uh, no, no advanced sale, no reviews, mm -hmm. no, uh, no, no interest. So, uh, so we ended up closing the show. And, um, and I thought, I'll never work in this town again, except I had another show I was working on called Woman of the Year. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and the Woman of the Year starred Lauren Bacall and Candor and Ab. I got to work with some marvelous people uh, in the course of my life here. Really talented people. That's one of the joys of working in the theater. I can't sing like they do. I can't compose like they do. And I get to work with them, whether it's Jerry Herman or Jerry and, and Fred. So, um, so we started working on Woman of the Year, and that became like the first beginning of my success. I was nominated for a Tony for that. And then uh, in 1983, I produced La Cage au Fall. Mm -hmm. And this was like a major step for me in my career because not only was it an important musical and a fun musical, uh, socially important and uh, with a real message as well as entertaining. And, Absolutely. Uh, and that was my that first was, Tony Award. Yeah. That was huge. Uh, not, not to uh, you know, cut the, uh, the chronology short. Uh, we're, we're running a little bit short on time. But I want to jump ahead. You, know, you, you had all of the, the – you, you worked your way up. You had the massive success you know, after many years of, of uh, struggle and effort. Uh, and now, you know, uh, in the later years, after all the successes, you, you and your wife have uh, put up uh, Broadway HD, which for me, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's like a Netflix for Broadway shows. That's ex exactly what it is. You know, we, uh, I've seen this happen. This doesn't happen overnight. You know, these things you learn, there's a learning curve. For years, mm -hmm. they, they were, we've been trying to marry live entertainment with other mediums. So whether it was pay-per-view on cable or DVDs capturing shows or mm -hmm. even PBS, how do you do that? And uh, it was a combination of technology, uh, curating the right shows to see, and the audiences were changing. Younger audiences who loved the theater, and it was growing. I can go through each decade from the 70s, the trough, to the peak of the golden age of Broadway, where we were young people, which we've always been trying to get involved with the theater to come. But, you know, they couldn't afford $150 for a Broadway musical. Right. They couldn't right. afford to come to New York City. So right. how do you get that to them? Mm -hmm. And we found that if they're going to watch their entertainment on their cell phones and they can buffer a show on their iPads, mm -hmm. that's an opportunity where I see the future. Forget the DVDs, forget the Blu-ray. That's the past. That's right. the button whip of another mm -hmm. century. We're mm -hmm. looking to the future. And so we were all set and primed uh, when this tragedy hit, the virus hit. Right, uh, right. To try and capture. But, but our, our mandate has always been to recreate the feeling of being in a Broadway theater. So you'll see the shows that we shoot. You know, you come in like an audience member. You hear the orchestra tuning up like an audience member. You hear people unwrapping their candies. Like in a That's amazing. And, and you can see the shows in real time as they're happening or are they recordings of the shows? These are recordings of shows where we use maybe 14 different cameras. Oh, so not, wow. not only do you get the best seat in the house, you get the best seat. All. You know, it's funny. When I've produced shows or directed shows, I always go to different places around the theater to see them. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. sight lines. You know, how's the sight line? House left, house right, the balcony. Sure. 
Most people, when they go to a show, they see one point of view, the ticket they bought. You right. get to see 14 different points of view. Plus, we have a new, you know, we, we created point of view shots, uh, with close up shots. You know, we shoot three performances, and then we'll do uh, personal shots like that. So, we're creating kind of a new art form. It's not a TV show, and it's not a movie. It's an experience that if you can't get to Broadway, get to Broadway HD. And that happens to be our motto. That's fantastic. Now, now how many titles are available on Broadway HD right now? We have over 350 titles now on our website, which includes Broadway, Off-Broadway, the West End Theater, and some regional theater as well. And, and it's, a, it's a very economical uh, thing to join. I think it's maybe like $8 a month to join as a member or $100 for a year or something like That's that. That's exactly right. $100 a year, $8.99 a month. Uh, and you get a free week trial just to test it out. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I personally, I'm so excited. And you've done a lot of uh, produced and, uh, and or directed a lot of Shakespeare. One of the ones that, that I'm most excited about going on Broadway HD to see is the one that you did with, uh, I think it was Romeo and Juliet with uh, Orlando Bloom and Condola Rashad many, about 15 yeah. years ago. Hey, oh boy, time, time steams roll, <laughs> steam, steam rolls over you. But yes, mm -hmm. he, and it was fun. He was terrific to work with. This is before she really in her stride and success. Right. And if you watch it, she's terrific. Condola right. does a great job with it, and a great Juliet. And it's a fun show to watch, very exciting. One of our top viewers on the Shakespeare level. That and the Patrick Stewart Macbeth is really uh, that I That I definitely have to check out. So I, I right. personally, it, one of the first things I'm going to be doing after this broadcast and is to go over to Broadway HD and to get my free uh, <laughs> trial <laughs> and oh. check out some of those wonderful things. Oh, uh, please, please do. We have a large collection there, including the Play Goes Wrong series, which is kind of fun. Oh, well. I, I, I've heard such wonderful things about that as well. Uh, well, but I, listen, I'd, I'd love to sit and, and hear about uh, much more of this, but we have two other wonderful guests that we have to get to. Uh, Stuart, thank you so much to you and to Bonnie for, for uh, making it happen to join us tonight. And hopefully we'll be having the chance to uh, chat with you at uh, greater length at some point uh, in, in the near future. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me. I'm glad I was able to connect with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, 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 as you say, it's a new technology connecting uh, the, the world of theater into the world of what's on your smartphone. So I'm very happy to have you join us tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Good night. Bye. Good night. All right. Thank you to Stuart Lane uh, and to previous to that to Lila Robbins.